better not lose the hype tier. That would be very embarrassing. So yeah, we underperformed in the tournament. I've misplayed like two out of two sets, like game losing misplays. Um, I might have been supposed to 3-0 hyped in the first case. I think I misplayed both of the losing matches there. Yikes. We misplayed the losing one against BBG. I think we haven't had like a natural loss. The one, the one potential inevitable loss was against Dog with Swain. It's possible that I couldn't have won that, although I think I'm pretty sure I could have. I don't know how I'm supposed to- that's such a big brain matchup, Swain versus Deep, man. I have no idea how I was supposed to play that. Every other game we lost today, all three of them, were off of the back of misplays. And that's definitely like too many misplays to be happy about. God, I'm such a downer when I play in tournaments. Normally I'm very positive, and very vibin', very chill, very effervescent. And in tournaments I'm just very just like, low energy and just constantly flaming myself. It's great. The, the mindset that you want when you're playing a tournament and the mindset that you want when you're trying to be a streamer are just unmarriable. There's just, there's no way to do it. Final game, boys. This is the finals. Don't like this, I'll keep the eye. Round one, fight! Right, let me load up Hypes lists again. So, no tracker, It's good news for me. There's nothing he's gonna play on round one that specifically like punishes this eye. I don't know, I mean you could avoid playing eye there. Maybe he wouldn't Warshash for fear of Thermal Beam. Yeah, he's running Hired Gun. Ah, that's fine. Okay, so we're starting turn two with a misplay already. Nice, nice, on track, on track. Oh yeah, I forgot I put this card in my deck. <laughs> what, what are you doing here? That's weird. Punished for misplay already. Good start, good start. This is questionable. That was a bit of a hot take play. Oh well. See again, nothing gets to me. Things roll off me like water on a duck. Okay? It's impossible to tilt me. And I've proven that by making two misplays already and being cool as a cucumber throughout. It really does fucking blow though. Whoops. I don't know, this game is like going long enough that I feel like Yoan is good. I and mean, he's attacking on e odds too. I have to keep Yoan in the hand. As much as I'd sort of like not to. God, this hand is so good, I really don't want to rummage or anything. Like, all I'm getting is a Salamander, right? Getting it in. One damage. Hot! Let's go, dude! Aggro eye, man. Ah, oh, yeah! Get it in there! It's an eye draw. It's a thing doer draw. It's okay. But yeah, he's attacking odds and we've got Yon, which is kind of cute. It should be noted this game went pretty off the rails based on like those two misplays, just to point out. It's not really how this is supposed to look. I don't know, Yoan will kind of always like be a pretty sweet blowout here, I think. Okay. I'll allow it. I mean, killing Misfortune is quite nice. I just want to make sure we have good odds of doing that. That kind of like, sort of awkward thing is the repost. Who actually has the repost anyway, right? This is a really a big finish for playing Ice Roll here, though. Yeah, yeah, Ice Roll, hit, Roll hits, let's do it, let's go. But yeah, this is kind of the matchup where Yone is just kind of like an absolute monster, pretty much. I don't really think I get enough value from hanging Vi back. We are enabling like 
a pretty solid repost from him. That we don't really have a good counter response for. Okay, sure. It's just like trolley to attack with Vi there. Pretty terrible play. He's on the 2 resolve version. So here he contemplates a bannerman. I'm trying to level Ezreal fairly quick here. He must have had a really good second option if he didn't slap that. Then again, it is hyped. Ah, jeez. I almost want to mulligan the Mystic Shot now. Yikes. But it's kind of like trash here. Dude, mulliganing the Mystic Shot is way too yikes, right? Isn't it? I think it is. I mean, I still do need to, like, level the Ezreal. And this thing still does need to eventually die. I don't know. I mean, I could ditch the Deep Meditation. I think in this hand, the Deep Meditation could be a pretty big payoff, too. And, like, the Ezreal is actually leveling quite swiftly here. So I might actually value just, like, keeping the Rummage and the Meditation. So usually you play, like, a Genevieve here. You, so Hyped right now is looking at my deck list. He's like, oh, this one of Yone. Do I do it? Do I not? Do I do it? Do I not? And it's Hyped, so it takes, like, 30 seconds. And then he'll Genevieve. Oh, man. I really hope that was a Genevieve. This misfortune is threatening a flip. That's that's pretty spooky stuff. I probably do just kind of have to gun this down. I'm pretty spooked here. That like that turn one that turn two misplay just like it's crazy how much of a, a chain of events these things can cause, huh? Man, this card's great. Why did people stop playing this card? Honestly, real talk. So especially if he's attacking in big like this, the scare card could absolutely be repost. If he had a repost, he'd more likely swing the misfortune as well. I don't think it really affects our play. I think we kind of always block like this anyway. I mean, this should be pretty basic. TV, yeah, it's kind of weird to not attack with misfortune if you have the repost, but it doesn't really matter if he has it or not. Our block kind of always has to be exactly this. And he's got a really bad Relentless Pursuit he's looking at, so he shouldn't really be able to play it out here or anything. Okay, so he's doing it just to flip the Misfortune here. That makes some sense, I mean, get it in onto Deny, there's definitely some, some call for something like that. I can see it. It's like, we don't really have good responses here at this mana point. Okay. I mean, isn't the Misfortune still just gonna die to the Vi? So we can't attack with the Misfortune. But... But... But the Vi... But the Vi... I don't know. Our Relentless Pursuit didn't seem all that... Oh god. Oh, he's not gonna skip this! Oh no! Oh god! Yeah, that's a bit better. just for the overwhelm. I guess it's kind of the same thing, right? Three, huh? Three's a little low. I'd like to be at more than three in like an ideal world. Oh well. So if I open attack, he can play another Relentless Pursuit, but I've got Deny. So the open attack is always good here. So we basically have to survive, what, one more turn? Could be a little rough. Single combat. One of single combat would be pretty hot here. I mean, it's kind of Deny food either way, I think. I'm probably forced into a pretty awkward deny. Whatever it is, whether it's like the single combat or the relentless, I have to take a... Actually, if it's single combat, I guess I could will. That'd be nice. I'd prefer to will. I think I'd rather... I just wanted to like, discard deny, actually. So 
So this kind of has to be better. We just need to get more Ezreal targets. We need to get our Eye of the Dragon enabled. And saving Deny for the second pursuit does have some vague utility. I could see that. Yeah, unfortunately there's no playing around that one-up resolve since there's nothing we can kill with a Mystic Shot otherwise. So that's a little bit of value he gets for free there, which is kind of sad. But his Valor can't kill my Ezreal, and his open attack can't kill my face, and playing around Palm is no good. So... I should be good here. We're getting the Eye of the Dragon. Ezreal's last trigger is going to come off of the Palm that he kind of can't really avoid to play into. And we have Claws of the Dragon, which is like kind of a nut draw here, I guess? I don't really know. Is it? So the Ezreal needs to potentially stay alive to the Valor, which is kind of like the one scary thing. Because like sometimes Ezreal can die to that if the Valor hits like the Warshafts or something like that. Quinn is actually potentially leveling off this attack too. That's pretty funny. I mean, I'm forced into Palming no matter what, and we want to flip the Ezreal before doing anything else. This one's a little tight. I'm on the edge of my seat right now. Just like what now? Whoa. Oh man. This is such a tough play. I'm actually like 100% sure this Mystic Shot is a misplay. There's no way that was correct. There's like, there's literally no possible way that Mystic Shot was correct. It's 100% incorrect. Oh well. I mean, eh, sometimes you just click it. It's like we lose to both like Resolve and Pursuit. So that's like four outs. Resolve, Resolve, Pursuit, Pursuit. Since he's only played one of each. This is terrible, terrible play. Can you no longer do the rummage trick? I guess it doesn't work with Thermo Beam. I mean, at two mana, he can't really do too much here, right? So, I mean, we're gonna see the very rare Quinn level up here. Prepare your eyes, boys. This is the first and last time you're gonna see this animation. I feel so bad for the animators of that. I mean, we're good against everything here, right? It's like we just go down to one, yeah? I don't think anything's happening here. He can't actually, like, punish us for going down to one. Nothing's gonna actually happen. It's the most you. You just go down to one. I mean, can he, like, stop this combat from happening? I don't know, whatever. We're kind of like set on the Ezreal win either way, I guess. So it's sort of like necessary to play around brain farts. Okay, I think this was his off the top on Ranger, so that should make us good. Right. Brutality. Okay, we burned up a lot of time on that matchup though, so we're gonna have to make sure we don't like eat too much time. 
It was almost certainly a misplay to block with the eye there, but I also think it can't matter. It's like, unless I was having some weird mental oopsie, and there was some way he could have dealt that one extra damage, it would have involved like a weird single combat. I don't want to like lose to a random brain fart. Okay, so now we have to win with our funk. This is the real challenge, boys. Let me be right. Man, I hope I just don't lose to like this own this trash deck of mine. Cause this is like a real question mark, guys. I'm not gonna lie. I can't pretend otherwise. This deck's a real thing. Round two. Fight. Oh well. Like, the hottest take. Okay. That's an easy pass here. Sometimes he's afraid of, like, the Jaw Hunter, so that might mess up his play a little bit. Hmm. That's quite interesting. I mean, honestly, I'm kind of afraid of, like, an early Bannerman. I think I'll take the Vile Feast while I can, really. Whoa, that's a resolve he's floating. Would you resolve here? If he resolves here, I put him on a second resolve. But if he has a second resolve, he'd snap it. But it's hype, so he hype doesn't snap things. Okay. I mean, hey, that's gonna work for me. Like, I'm pretty happy with that exchange. That's a pretty terrible resolve. So as always, we're gonna try to obliterate the Grizzly Ranger. Uh-oh. I mean, it just kind of seems as easy as, like, playing Maokai out here and having the Maokai not die. So, I am in. I'll let him swing here. That's fine. Whatever. It's like, his board is looking real not good here. I'm... Okay. Sick. Oh, I should be watching the tosses. I don't know. That's some, that's some try-hard shit. We're not playing this tournament to try-hard. <sighs> I'm gonna be like completely honest here. In that other game, the one against like, I think Dog, I also wasn't watching the tosses like literally at all. Like I was kind of pretending that I was. I was like talking about Ruination and in my head I was just like, God, I hope he actually didn't toss Ruination. Cause I was like, I said he didn't toss Ruination. I wasn't watching the tosses. Like, really have no idea what what's getting tossed left and right here. Um, Thorny Toad. Wait, there's no log of it. But I can't see what Thorny Toad tossed. What the heck? I mean, we could enter deep faster or we could just, like, play a bunch of dudes. You know what would be sick here? Oh, not that. I was gonna say Tracker. Whee! Looks like we're just good. Jeez. I don't know, do I care? I must care at least a little bit. I just like, just doesn't feel like I care that much, right? I mean, there's a couple of things to do here. I guess I'll just do this. I don't know, this is okay. I don't get my Maokai trigger for this turn. I mean, this is kind of why I put this card in my deck, right? Why the hell am I running Vengeance? Whatever. Hesitation says he doesn't have a second resolve. That's not right. I don't like hesitating there. It's a bluffable spot for resolve, right? Threaten the Quinn? Wait, that's not hesitation. He's just getting a scout attack in. He and I both had the same brain fart. Never mind. Ignore what I just said. I don't know, whatever. Um, it could be best to like play less into resolve. I do want to like diminish the value on a second resolve. I'll let the Quinn hit me. Okay, he snap plays it there. I think second resolve is out of his range. First resolve was pretty loose though. I, w I wouldn't use that first resolve like that unless I had another one, I think. 
Okay, I mean, I can just start getting into deep then, I guess. That's fine. So just keep in mind, guys, like, Nautilus and Jettison are straight up bad cards. We don't need those cards. We lose a Ruination and a second fish and a Mist Call. Mm -hmm. It's okay, we've got the first fish. Well, don't mind if I do. Okay. Why not? Sweet. I draw my second ruination. The casual, like, was that a 5%er? Like, any good player would here. It's not really needed, but it plays around to lose condition. It's a nice safety draw. Being a high level card gamer is just all about drawing cards like this. That's really what it takes. I mean, he's gonna get some pretty cute value out of this Genevieve thingy. Yum. It's like, these scouts attacks aren't bad. I mean, am I ever losing out to this damage? This is a little bit better, because like the Quin Hawk is gonna drag it if I don't. I'd rather have the Quin Hawk drag something smaller here. Probably should be a little bit better for me. Thorny Toad's all right. Hands a little low on resources, so I mean I can certainly imagine some hands of his that would actually be potentially a little scary. Okay, I was lying when I said that was the last time you'd see that. You got me. So the quality of our top decks is going to be quite a bit better than his here. The only issue is, like, we're kind of like light on these finishers. Oh, Bertrand. I don't know. This is where the trolling element of the deck sort of comes into play. It's like having a Nautilus here would be all right, I guess. Eh. I'll just keep passing. Eventually I'll draw something big. I mean, I guess I'll try to remove the Quinn. Okay. We kind of are eventually going to need to hit something, though. Otherwise, this, this will eventually get awkward if we just keep, like, not drawing things. He probably has, like, a weird double pursuit hand, would be my guess. This is probably, like, top of our range on Ruination, unfortunately. If he passes here, that's delightful. That means his hand is absolute ass. But yeah, it's more likely he's got like one decent card there. So that's like a little awkward. He could actually win now. Yeah, the second Quinn. We're still not drawing any of our top end, which is pretty sad. Man, these draws are absolutely horrible. Holy shit. It would be pretty funny to lose the tournament to this. We were, we were quite favored on like turn five. Yeah, I mean, it looks like we're dead here. I mean, what draw gets us there at this point? We're not on, like, the second Ruination. Stuff like Grasp is gonna end up being just a bit too slow. Man. This is painful. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're on outs at this point. <sighs> okay, he should be good. So we're going to game three then. Which is Darrowing versus this deck. That one should be a bit favored for him. It's like this one we were favored. We drew like horrendously poorly after the first. Like we, ha we had a good like kind of like top seven or so. And then like every card we've drawn since like turn four or five has been completely dead. So we're going to game three and he'll have the, he'll have the favorable matchup on game three. Fatality. So game three it is. I think he's got like a super standard version of Darrowing. Let's go ahead and pull that up here. That game I feel pretty fine with. Um, I don't know. There's very little we can do differently in a game like that. Every other loss today has been pretty face palmy. Um, and some of them, you know, usually it's a combo of like bad luck and a bit of like misplay. Like you're supposed to play in a way that makes you safe from bad luck. So it's like you never really can complain about bad luck because it's always it's never a mutually exclusive with the misplay, right? That's the mentality to have. But that was that was just like an absolutely insanely bad draw. So that's the first like loss of the day that I mean I don't think I missed anything super major there. That's the first loss of the day that I'm pretty fine with. Which is okay. We're seeing a lot more Quinn than I expected. This would be like this is the one matchup where against the Quinn version of the deck, um, I definitely could curve a little bit later. I was much more expecting, like, Lucian versions of Scouts, because I think those perform a little bit better. Okay, so he's running, like, a pretty standard Darrowing here. And yeah, we're, we're unfavored here, I think. We need to be on, like, a pretty great hand to be ahead. The Grasps aren't really good enough, like, super early here, unfortunately, so I will have to kick them. Final round, fight! But yeah, if he's got like a really good hand, the thing about Darrowing is like, when it has a really good hand, you kind of lose no matter what. So you'd love to see a Grenadier here, because then we'd get like the great Hired Gun play. So the only question is like, can Hired Gun get better value later? I think it actually has some options, honestly. Let's just do this for now. Pretty solid hand, honestly, all things considered. For the matchup, it's like one of the rougher matchups. So here, now, like, the Vile Feast would be nice, but... I mean, obviously, you are under threat of transfusion at that point. And there's not, like, an insane amount you can really do about that. If he transfusions, that actually gives us a hilariously like decent hired gun after the fact. I really can't jaw hunters here though. We really need to like try to maybe kill a rider with that. Giving him a solid transfusion is probably a little hard to escape here. Okay, this feels fine then. So his attacks aren't really great here. He might have to attack with the Disciple as well. I think he should, actually. Because I have, like, a really easy block hired gun into this. And at one mana, he can't really do anything. He's got Elixir of Wrath in his deck as a one of. But I'm not really too worried about that. So that's a potential giga misplay um you kind of can't like do that into a pass against draw hunters now i'm actually guessing that that wasn't a misplay and he's probably on a nut like double basilisk rider hands which is really sad it's more likely that he just has like a nut blowout hand uh, yeah we'll just end up feeling bad oh well could also just have like a really aggressive harrowing and we don't have ruination yet so sometimes we can lose to a harrowing I'm actually pretty happy to play a thorny toad here 
You never really mind using Toad to block like a Draven here. I mean, if he's gonna use an axe just to like finish off the Toad, that's usually totally fine. Get it? Totally. <laughs> We're bombing out, by the way. We lost. Time for the money <sighs> Give it a good run, though. Ooh. That's kind of cute. That's sort of his entire hand for that, though. So Mysticall actually has some pretty good hits here. If it hits like Hired Gun, then we get to clear off the Draven. It's either hitting Gun or Toad. Usually they play a Darius here. not third Draven. I mean, I have no choice but to attack into this, I think. Third Draven would be a sick hand. So his hand range is getting a little narrow. I'm thinking harrowing is seeming pretty likely. Now we do have a few obliterates, which will on average make his harrowing a little bit worse, which is kind of nice for me. I think this is a pretty easy thresh. So if he goes in to kill the thresh, we have a really high value missed call, which is great, and he should do that. So usually how this works is he presses the axes on the thresh. Ooh, he's got a... Whoa, 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 what is that? It's... Wow, it's been in his hand this entire time. Second Fervor? Elixir of Wrath. Ooh, could be the one of Elixir of Wrath. That is such a bizarre card. This, this, So this card, this spell he just thought about using, has been in his hand the entire time, but we've eliminated like most tricks from his hand range. He, th This isn't a card he drew recently. It's a card he drew like three, uh, two or three turns ago, I think. Or maybe longer ago than that. But he can't think about using Elixir of Iron here. Yeah, this is usually just how it should go. And then I just res the Thresh and call it a day. Whee! So he's at two cards in hand. Well, that's good news for us. So his last card is Harrowing? It's not a great Harrowing. It really isn't fantastic. This is a pretty weird game we have. This is so strange. There's a lot of draws that actually want us to be making more mana. We still have both Ruinations left in our deck. I'm lying, I haven't been looking at the tosses. I guess he's on a brick hand. I mean, what's his range? Harrowing? Fervor? If he wants the fervor this, I will allow it. Okay. Now the real carry is coming. Defensive harrowing? Defensive harrowing is a pretty funny play. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Dead Bloom would have been nice last turn. That could have potentially been uh, pretty sweet. Boys, this is a little bit of a BM finish. If that wasn't clear, because you can just do it on the demolitionist, but it's more funny to do it on this. Interesting. So that makes his card transfusion. That's kind of funny. That's the only reason he's attacking with these two early, because his card is transfusion, and he wants to like cheese me by not not letting the uh, not letting this card die, basically. Okay, seems good. It's just style points finish. It's like, it's pretty BM to do it like that, because I could have fading memories than anything, but it's a lot funnier to win the game in that fashion. So that's, it's a BO3, right? So that means we place number one in the tournament. Um, overall, uh, pretty happy with my play and pretty happy with my lineup. I made slightly more misplays than I would have liked, but I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable with it all uh, kind of like together. You know, I'd be remiss if I didn't give another really big shout out to my prep group and my team at large. I mean, you guys know who's on my team, but I really couldn't have done this without my prep group. It was seven whole people that were just like working nonstop and my, my girlfriend, DPM Licious as well. But huge, absolute, like massive shout out to Precipic, Fresh Lobster, Good Day Maverick, Nick Makes Plays, Presto, Rattling Bones, and Silver Fuse. These are uh, basically, these, these guys spent a ton of time in the past week helping me um, sort of like design the lineup and do like prep scrims and stuff like that. Um, and I really couldn't have done this without them. So like, and honestly it was a lot of fun. Like the last week preparing for this tournament was probably like, probably the most fun I've I've had in Runeterra. I mean, you guys didn't get to see any of it cause I didn't stream it, but it was, um, yeah, it was, it was really fun.